Hi, I'm Jay Lee. I'm one of the pediatric orthopedic surgeons at Johns Hopkins, and my subspecialty is sports medicine. We're talking about pediatric knee injuries, and today I'm going to tell you about the discoid meniscus. So I'm going to tell you five things that you should know about a discoid meniscus. But number one, what is the meniscus? The meniscus is a fibroelastic structure in the center of your knee. It's a shock absorber between the thigh bone and the shin bone. And basically, it optimizes force transmission between the femur and the tibia. And in a way, it acts as a shock absorber. It's pretty important as it protects the articular cartilage in the knee, this white stuff here. And that is the surface that all your joints move and glide on. If you have absence or damage to the meniscus itself, this oftentimes will lead to cartilage wear and arthritis. So in terms of the discoid meniscus, uh, this is a confusing picture because this is a bird's eye view of that blue structure that sits between the femur and the tibia. So a bird's eye view looking from the top, you'll see that this here, this is a normal meniscus. This is crescent shaped and this is what a meniscus is supposed to look like. If your child has what's called a discoid meniscus, it's oftentimes more of a full moon rather than a crescent moon. And it takes up a lot more space, it's a lot thicker, and it's a lot more susceptible to injury. In terms of a discoid meniscus, it's actually pretty common. 5% of the average population will have it. This meniscus developed abnormally, and because it's thicker and wider, and oftentimes disshaped that's more prone to injury. So number two, how is a discoid meniscus the same as a normal meniscus? And so in terms of the injury, the injury and causing symptoms can be similar. You can have an athlete present with contact or non-contact twisting injuries. They oftentimes will report some deep pain and report some mild swelling. Oftentimes after the injury, they'll notice that their knee locks or clicks. The treatment is also very similar. The concept of repairing and trying to salvage the meniscus is what we do for most pediatric patients. And this is to preserve the long-term function of the knee. So how is a discoid meniscus different from the normal meniscus? So like I said, the discoid meniscus is thicker and wider, and oftentimes the structure itself is less robust. And so this meniscus is more prone to tear, and oftentimes this means a younger patient will present with meniscal problems. The injury, again, like I said, could be a contact or non-contact twisting injury. But oftentimes, since the tissue is less robust, it's oftentimes a younger kid without an injury starting to have knee pain and knee locking and clicking. So what do we know about the discoid meniscus? This is original classification. This is from the 1950s. It's described by Watanabe. And this was a very basic understanding of what the discoid meniscus was. A and B talk about the shape of the meniscus, and C talks about the abnormal connection of the meniscus to the surrounding structures. So over the years, our understanding of the discoid meniscus has really blossomed. We know a lot more about the discoid meniscus. We talk about its overall width. We talk about its height. We talk about how well it's attached to the structures around it. And we talk about the different patterns of tears. And so recently, our understanding has really changed. Number five, so with our new understanding of a discoid meniscus, it's important to consider these different characteristics when you're considering treatment for a discoid meniscus. So number one, we traditionally knew that the meniscus was wider. So if you notice on the far side, there's a normal width meniscus there. And here, as we move across, this is a wider meniscus. And here are the two widest menisci. And so in terms of treating a discoid meniscus, you want to normalize the width. So you want to take a meniscus that looks like this, a full moon, and make it a crescent moon, like the far image there. In terms of looking at the height, this is looking at the knee from the front. And you can see the meniscus is this gray structure here in between. It's a very subtle difference. But the goal in treatment is to go ahead and potentially address that excessive height so it's not stuffing and filling that space between the femur and the tibia. One of the things that we've more recently come to understand is that the discoid meniscus is not only abnormal in shape and size, but it's also abnormal oftentimes in the way it's connected to the surrounding structures. This is something that is oftentimes missed, and this is a crucial component to treating 
a discoid meniscus. This is again a bird's eye view, and this is what we would do in surgery. This structure here is a probe. We would take the probe and push and pull on the meniscus and try to determine where it's not well attached. So in the far image, you'll notice the probe is pushing on the meniscus, but it's not moving at all. In these images here, when we're pushing on the meniscus, it's actually shifting, uh, shifting back and shifting forward. And that tells us we need to do more than the average meniscus. Not only do we have to reshape it in terms of width and thickness, we'll also have to go ahead and stabilize it and sew it back together. And then the final concept is looking at the different tear patterns. We're coming to understand that different tear patterns might tell us different things about the prognosis of the meniscus, how likely something is to heal and how likely it is to re-tear. So understanding the different tear patterns is pretty key in terms of properly addressing the discoid. This is just a sample image. This is what we see in surgery with our arthroscopic procedures. This is looking through at a discoid meniscus uh, on the far image over there. And if you see here, this far image shows a big, thick meniscus. And here, we've started to shave and take away a little bit more of that abnormal structure. And then here, you have that crescent shape that is more common in a normal meniscus. So basically, we've gone to that full moon and started there and gone to a crescent moon. And this meniscus will have better function, and this will also relieve the symptoms that the patient had. If you have any questions, or if your patient or your child has any knee issues, we'd be happy to help. Please reach out to us. Thank you for watching.